I welcome all of you to this video, the volume frustum of a square pyramid. Take here a square pyramid, slice it parallel to the base, you develop a frustum of that solid. Let's see how we would derive the formula for the volume of this frustum. There's a certain height you can see over here. There's a certain upper base which would have a certain area a lower base obviously larger it would have its own area any cross-sectional slice will be square there is no rotation involved so we're looking here at a square with a certain side s you know the area over here is equal to s square if we can do from a lower limit let's say a to an upper limit b the area of this whether it's regards to x or y we can determine the volume easily and that's how we would do it we have to determine the area of this right here what is the area of a slice which accounts for this convergence from the base the slices are large towards the top the apex of this frustum if you want to call it the slices are small there's a certain linearity which comes with regards to as your slices are going from the bottom to the top and that depends very much on the inclination of this line you see which are any of these lines you can start here by arbitrary point we'll call that a comma h because it's a certain height above and another point we can call this b comma zero it's a segment you can draw if you want you can look at everything with regards to an x and y axis but this represents geometrically what you see over here you would want to determine the formula of this remember no rotation we're looking only at slices y is equal to you have to determine the slope it's a downward sloping line minus h or b minus a x plus y intercept which i can call b prime because i already have a b used here i can use this point as zero is equal to minus h b over b minus a plus that y intercept solve for it the y intercept is equal to h b over b minus a suddenly our equation becomes y is equal to minus h x over b minus a plus h b divided by b minus a but i'm going to be going upwards with regards to my limits because i'm going to do volume with respect to y hence i have to convert this into x equals format and i will x is equal to i will take this y intercept on the other side i will flip this slope factor as it goes on the other side i'll impact everything by means of the minus reversing the signs and the items impacted everything will become this h b over b minus a minus y multiplied by this slope factor which has flipped b minus a divided by h the minus has already been utilized in doing the flip you can open this up x is equal to this cancels out that cancels out you have b minus y times b minus a over h up till now it looks very much like the cone volume frustum procedure but from this point onwards not this will change this ironically and incidentally is also equal to your side because again your slices are dependent on the convergence as you're seeing from the bottom up there's a certain linearity over here between the height and this line and the slope that comes with it that's equal to s area with regards to y is equal to s square which is equal to that square b minus y times b minus a over h all of this is going to be squared we can open this up it's a minus b whole square b square plus y square b minus a whole square over h square minus 2ab 2by times b minus a over h what does this represent area with respect to y what's my actual volume integral going from lower limit to upper limit i'm calling the height of that frustum h and then you're doing area with respect to y dy you're integrating the cross-sectional slices which is exactly what you see here we're going to integrate this across that limit 0 to h why don't i erase this equal sign and bring in my 0 to h and here's my dy this right here represents my integral which is right over here we have to integrate this bring in the y b square y plus y cube b minus a whole square over 3 h square minus 2 b y square b minus a over 2 h we have an upper limit h the only meaningful limit here zero is irrelevant bring the h upper limit into places of y b square h plus h cube b minus a whole square over 3 h square minus 2 b h square b minus a divided by 2 h simplify it you'll have a b squared h here you'll have a h times b minus a whole square over 3 minus the 2's the h's cancel out you'll have a b h times b minus a this is where we are all of this 
You keep simplifying it and you'll get the volume formula. Impact everything with the common denominator 3. 3 b square h plus open this item here on the top the binomial and multiply it by h you'll have a b square h plus a square h minus 2b h a remember this was the entire component here under the denominator 3 so it's not being affected by that denominator 3 because it's already under a denominator look right here and multiply everything by 3 as you open it the denominator 3b square h plus 3b h a that's what we have let's clean it all out 3b square h minus 3b square h cancel out i have a b square h plus a square h minus 2b h a plus 3b h a is a plus b h a all of this obviously is over a 3 this entire expression right here which i had i could have written as 1 over 3 because i had everything impacted by the denominator 3 which i brought out 1 over 3 this 1 over 3 is now kind of making its way back. What I want to do from this entire expression is isolate an h and a 3 h over 3 and what remains b square plus I'll write this item first b a plus a square. This represents your volume formula for the first term of a square pyramid. You know in terms of the items you're seeing here the h refers to the height of the first term, b refers to the side dimensions of the lower base which is a larger area. The A refers to the side dimensions of the upper face, the upper base if you want to call that, and that's the face with the smaller area dimension. And that right there is our volume formula. It is right. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.